Okay, welcome back. The fall 2023 semester, day number two. And here we are in Applied Mechanics 2. Good way to start the day. Well, maybe not start the day. Some of you probably already started out an hour and a half ago, but here we are, start, starting together. <clears throat> so, I, I'm Professor Cooper, Ryan Cooper, Professor Ryan Cooper. What, what is this class? Why are we here? I mean, I know it's required. It's dynamics, dynamics. But why, why, why be here? To get an education. Education, just general. I mean, you can take any class for an education, too, right? Underwater basket weaving. Ping pong classes. Take a second, ask a neighbor, what are they doing here? Like, what do you expect to learn or what are you hoping to learn? Something like that. Like, why, why this class? Why? I mean, it's required. There's got to be some reason that it's required. Otherwise, we need to go back, revise the curriculum, which we do every like decade or so. It takes a long time, but. It's still, it made it through the last revision. It's still here. Why is it here? So what do you think? Education. Still taking the Things always move, right? Yeah, I'm 
Okay, so far I only briefly surveyed a small section of the room, but I've heard everything moves. Like, no matter what you do, there's always motion involved. So someone else brought up, like, if, if things are moving, they're creating forces. Understanding how forces and motion are connected to each other is a big part of this. How is force and motion connected? Force equals what? MA, yeah. Usually that's like, everyone knows F equals MA, and then, then it's like, oh, okay, F equals MA, now solve the second order differential equation, and then everyone's like, what? Um, but that's, that's for future you to worry about. That's not today. Let future you deal with that. So force in motion, F equals MA, force is mass times acceleration. So if something's moving, it's creating a force that is proportional to its acceleration and its mass combined, like that MA term. Something like that. What else? Did anyone else find different answers? Why are you here? Why this class? Or what you're hoping to learn? Because you already know force equals MA. So are we done? Call it quits? See you at the final? Mm -hmm. Well, there is no final, but we could just say, like, let's do nothing all semester, and then I'll give you one big final, because you already know F equals MA. If we want to revise the class to do that, so you get, like, 14 weeks off and then one huge stressful final, we could do that if you want. That sounds terrible to me, but... What else? Why... What do you hope... Does anyone have something that they're hoping to learn or that like someone that they talk to is hoping to learn? Yeah. More like real life, um, like examples of like, bridges. Obviously, that's real life. But bridges are real, yeah. I guess. Okay, yeah, yeah. Things that like move or something. Yeah, Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spider Man's a good like pendulum problem. What's the tensile strength needed for Spider-Man's webs as he's swinging, or if he's stopping a train, or anything like that? Yeah. The first semester that I taught this, like six years ago, someone's like, we want more real-world examples, and I started giving real-world examples, but they're hard. Like, it, it's like a lot of math and a lot of weird variables. And they're like, we didn't want this real world. We want, like... Simplify it, like <laughs> video game real world. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. But yeah, but get get something that's like get motion involved in the problem somehow. Cool. Oh, let me mute this. I just that wasn't bothering anyone in the back. The echo. You enjoy hearing the voice twice? No. That drives me crazy. As soon as I recognize it, I'm like, Ugh. Okay. So, a little bit of logistics stuff. We'll get back into why are we here and what can we do with this. But this is my main, uh, like, court for all of my, like, open educational resource uh, website. Um, if you're trying to get, like, book some time, like, you want to ask questions, or even if you have questions about, like, uh, careers and resumes and how does this class actually relate to a career in engineering. I'm happy to have those, com those kind of conversations. You can click this link for Calendly and that it always, it's supposed to sync up with my calendar so I try to keep that up to date. Once in a while you'll say you said you're free but something else came up. But for the most part if it says I'm free we should have that half hour time to uh, to, to meet and discuss either the course or something else. And the website that I just sent out was our Applied Dynamics 
coming up. This is applied mechanics to en so engineering dynamics. This is all the collection of like videos and readings and all the material for this class. There's a textbook that, that I like from, that the library hosts online. So you can download the PDFs from the Yukon library. Uh, so you don't need to buy like any, any textbook for this class. If you wanna buy the textbook, it, it's pretty good, this Kasdan and Paley, um, but you can always download the PDFs and, and work on it on your computer. Um, some people like to have the hard copy. Um, uh, so let me show that. Yeah, so there's links, as this is catching up with me, there are links to each of the chapters that we reference from the Kasdan and Paley book. And then, and some of the homework assignments are asking you to do like question number 211, and that would be in chapter two of Casting Paley. You can get that PDF there. I know the, the first class is a lot of like logistic, me telling you how things are gonna go or ask, asking some questions, but a lot of this stuff. So again, some more logistical stuff. Um, I set up a course, I'll zoom in some, and I sent out links in Husky CT. I, I don't really care for Husky CT, so I avoid using it. I do send out the first announcement to give you all the resources that we need, uh, but then for the rest of the class, I like Campus Wire for announcements. It's an online discussion board, uh, but once you sign up, then whenever I post a an announcement, there's room for comments and questions underneath it. So it's not just a one way uh, kind of Husky CT. That, that one I don't really care for because it's like a big announcement. And then if people have questions and it's these like sporadic emails back and forth, this one gives us like one source where people can ask questions, post suggestions for the course and that kind of thing. Uh, and again, avoiding Husky CT, Google Classroom. Have you, has anyone used this before? Like some people before coming to UConn have used Classroom. I really like it. It's like a simple interface and you can, add, and you can use a uh, Google Drive account to like upload and download or kind of manage your classroom materials. And the part that I like about it is that now you have like a portfolio of work that says that you completed this course and that you understand it. Like you've got examples of how you have used dynamic, dynamics and engineering mechanics too, to actually show that you understand it. So I like that. Then we'll use Jupyter. Jupyter is like, it's a, I mean, it's a general uh, coding interface, but we're gonna use Python to solve some engineering problems. If you have not used Python, or you have used it, but decided that you never want to use it again, like you're just like, no, I'm, I'm just not a coder. Um, I'm not asking you in this class to build your own code sets. I'm always going to give you working examples and you can change your goal as the engineer and as the dynamics professional or like blossoming professional is that you can look at some results be able to change inputs and tell me what's happening in this like model simulation or something. So if it's like a pendulum and you see that the pendulum has a one second period, but you want to make it a two second period, you know that you can change the length of the pendulum. Would you make it shorter or longer? What do you think? Longer. Longer. Yeah. So if you make the pendulum length longer, then the period of oscillation will increase. Um, again, we'll get to that stuff, but I'm just testing the waters. And I know I'm only getting a lot of lectures that are only like 5% of the class that are like super prepared. Someone read through the entire textbook and they're like, I'm going to nail this first class. This is going to be great. Um, so we'll get there. We're all working on this together. And I, I like collaboration and projects. So this is all project based. Um, so we'll come down to, I guess we'll get in, we'll go straight into like grading. 
because that's usually usually the place where people want to know what's going on. So it's catching up. So grading, there's a participation component, and it's coming up in a second. Participation is one fifth of your grade that is defined by you. So you decide if coming to class is what you think of as participation in the course, coming to class and like talking to people about the course or asking questions, that's a great way of participating in the course. And you can say that I came to 95% of the lectures and I always had a working group. So I deserve an A for this participation part. Um, if something's different, like it's hard to get to campus, like if you're commuting two hours and this is the only class in the day, then maybe you do want to use live streams and the online discussion board more. So maybe that would be your definition of participation. Is that I watched all the online lectures on all the online kind of live streams and I was participating on Campus Wire and now I also deserve an A for this course or some mix of the two or if you have your own working group where you're doing your own thing like a text message group chat like any of those are great examples of saying that you have fulfilled the participation requirement in the course. Um, is that okay? Too open-ended? Sometimes engineers like like a checkbox, like I want to, I'm going to post 10, 10 things where I agree with people on the, on the online discussion and I'm going to be in 15 classes and this is okay to so just define it yourself. It's a good example. It's a great way. Um, like whenever you're asked to do, whenever you're an engineering professional in a couple of years, someone will say like, was your project su successful? And you can say, yes. And then they'll ask you why. And then you have to make it up. You, you have to make up numbers about how successful your project is. So let's say you built a road. It's like, my road is successful because it has 1,500 pedestrians that are safe walking down it every day and 30 cars that pass through every hour and at all these like extra things that you're making. So as an engineer, you're like painting with numbers instead of painting by the numbers, your paintings are numbers, creating these stories that are defined by metrics. Like how do you define success? How do you define failure? All these things. So we'll get some practice in this course of doing that through these projects where I'll ask you like, okay, what, what else could you define for this problem? And it's not asking for a, like, oh, you could define the force. If you say that, then what is the force? Is it 15 Newtons, 1500 Newtons? Um, something like that. Homeworks and homework is gonna be um, each module. So we have five, really four, mod, four modules, well, five modules, because module zero is like the getting started like typical so we'll have homework assignment for that one and then uh, modules one through four are um, more like dynamics like material and then module five the last two weeks of the course i have set aside where you're designing your own project so something and part of module one the module one project is proposing something that that you think is important, that you think would be a good application of motion and forces. And it could either be a combination of trying to figure out what forces are involved or trying to figure out how motion is constrained in a given system, like a pair of pliers. Like how does a pair of pliers, what is the geometry of that motion as you like snap it shut? Um, or I've seen other stuff. Sometimes it's like real big ideas. Like I want to model walking. And that seems simple because everybody walks and we don't even think about, I don't even think about walking anymore. But if I wanted to create a mechanical model of what it takes to walk, it turns out to be surprisingly hard. And like Boston Dynamics has been working on that for 50 years. And just now they're getting to like walking robots. It's surprisingly difficult to like 
get something to walk, at least on two legs. On four, it's slightly easier, but it's still a lot of like three-dimensional positioning and making sure center of gravity is not unstable. So you can lift one leg, then lift the other. Quizzes, this one, um, over the summer, I was working, working with some students on, on like a summer five week course of this class. And we started doing free body diagrams and kinetic di and so kinetic diagrams is kind of the extra part. So in statics, in applied mechanics one, you did free body diagrams. Like some of the forces is zero and some of the moments is zero. The extra part is that instead of saying that it's all equal to zero, say that it's all equal to MA and whatever changes in angular momentum you might have. So that's the extra part. Um, it's always the same diagram for that kinetic diagram, but it adds some complication. It makes makes the math, instead of always having linear problems, where it's just a set of variables that you're solving for, it becomes linear differential equations. Sometimes they're constant for like a ball falling, like kinematic equations, and other times they're not. So anyway, over the summer, I was like, okay, draw a free body diagram for this, and, and people were having trouble doing that. So I created some exercises in drawing and using free body diagrams that were shorter. And I, I think that that would be a great exercise here for these quizzes is that like every three weeks we do like a free body diagram exercise where it should take about 10 minutes. And then we'll, then we'll take like the best four of those. And it, that would be on online with kind of flexible due dates for that one. So I would give, I would give three days to do it and then, and then post a video on like how I would approach it. And I think that would work. We'll try it once. We'll try it with a couple of them. Well, yeah, we'll try it like once or twice. And if it's not working for this class or you feel like it's too much review, then, then we'll switch to a different kind of quiz structure. How do people, how do you feel about free body diagrams? Like if, if someone said, draw a free body diagram like of this of this camera would you know how to start what would you draw yeah Maybe, well, make it simple so just draw like the lines all right the angles. get some angles in there yeah so we're, yeah so i'm asking like Yeah, so we have something like this. And let's just stick to like two dimensions, right? Just so it's easier to draw. But let's say we have this. So what kind of forces would be on the camera? Gravity. We got gravity. Where do I draw gravity? OK, where? Like, just like right here? I would put it at each pin. Each pin? OK. Every pin, yeah. Then there's some kind of normal force from the table, okay. Draw something that way. This way, that way. Mm -hmm. So I'll show, like the way that I would do it. I would say the camera is the heaviest part. So that's going to be my mass, like the weight that I care about. Um, if if I want to get more involved, then and this will catch up in a second. If I want to make it more involved, then I can start giving weights to all the other like the, the two arms that are supporting it. But for to start, I would just say, all right, the camera is my heavy part, so that's going to be mass times gravity. The only, the only like external force is like from that table, right? So we said that there was some kind of reaction force, so 
I'll put a reaction force pointing up, and that'll keep the camera from falling through the table. But there's also something left right because it's a pin that there happen that there's got to be some kind of anytime you um, put a pin through something, you restrict that it has to move in a circle. So there's an X and a Y uh, component to it. So we'll call this like NY and X. And then I'm going to also put, because it's not moving, So it's not, it's not moving. So each of these pins that are holding it are, they've got some kind of friction keeping them from letting it just droop back down. So as far as like what forces are involved, this thing's statically sitting here. So I would, I would need the reaction forces that are keeping it falling, some kind of torque that's keeping it from falling over. And then up here also some kind of like frictional torque and some frictional torque. And I called it like O, A, and B, or just assigning hinge locations, O, A, B. What do you think? Does this feel like, where the heck is that coming from? Or like, oh yeah, th this is what I should have remembered. Or like, somehow, it's, it's hard, like especially after a summer off, I don't expect you to come in and be like, oh yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was drawing. You just drew it faster than me. Um, so it takes practice. But one question, so you had brought up that there should be some kind of like force along these, right? Why didn't I draw that? Internal forces. In, internal? Yeah. What's in, in, what makes it internal? Internal. Net forces, net internal forces are going to balance out to zero. Yeah. So, although, although there is like we can call this like some A X force and some, or sorry, A Y and A X. There is an A X and an A Y. Again, it'll catch up in a second. But there's also an equal and opposite A X A Y from whatever hinge one to hinge two. If there's a force from hinge one to hinge two, there's also one from two to one. And it's gotta be equal opposite. And that one's Newton's third law, or no, first law, equal and opposite. Now I'm mixing it up. First law, is the first one? Third, third one, equal and opposite, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to draw those in, if it's an internal force, then you don't have to draw it on that big diagram. But you can always split it up into multiple diagrams. So we could say that there's an AX here and an AY with our MG. And again, it'll catch up in a second. So we can, if you want to take those two parts and consider them separately, you can split up those two arms and say that this arm is its own thing, this other arm is its other own thing, and they're both applying forces to each other. A little bit of review. Um, something new, something old, all fun stuff. So that was my thought for quizzes, is do something like this, where you're given a system and you're supposed to draw the forces on it. 
and then answer some some kind of question about it. Um, like if these are all the forces and it's not moving, then like what is the total reaction for? Like what is the total n or something? Um, and then the projects is the, the last component. That one's going to be um, one. So there's one project at the end where we'll spend two weeks working on something that you think is important. And then we'll, you'll also have three projects for me in uh, modules two, three, and four, where I give you a, a Jupyter notebook and I, and I ask you to change it, like make some modifications to like, how it's set up and then answer some engineering questions about like the output that you're getting from that Python code. So, and again, for the most part, you won't, you won't need to like create your own code to like build a graph from scratch. Like I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you enough starter code that it, you can do some, at least have the, the data that you need and then you can analyze it from there. Um, so it just gives you a little bit more interactive design work there. Issues, issues so far with like how grading is broken down. Participation seems okay so far. Homeworks are usually like textbook kind of problems. And then quizzes and projects will all be kind of made by me. Since the homework is online, are we also submitting like uh, the processes and like the our freedom of mind? Yeah, yeah. So let's take a look at. So if we come down to homework one, I ask you to do uh, some problems from the textbook, and and then also there's a second part where I created. It's being real slow today. I feel like internet has been very slow the last two days. Uh, but anyway, so we've got some textbook problems from that Kasdan Paley textbook. And then part two, I'm asking you to solve. These are like differential equations for a couple of different systems. And this class is a kind of flipped lecture format. So right now, I'm doing a lot of talking and just like telling you what's going on but as we get into the material my hope is that you're going through these reference materials and reading through some of this introductory material for each module and then when we come to class we can spend that time working on homework problems so we can pull up 1.1 and I can say all right do we have what questions are there or where are you stuck and if there's exam if there's parts where uh, you can work together, then that's great. Or if there's something that I can help, then I'll do a demo in class and show how I would approach the problem. That's uh, the next part. So on your time, my goal would be, like, the ideal goal is that you go home and you do like reading, reading and watching videos. And then when you come to class, you finish the homework and then, then you're done. So you absorb kind of the material and then you apply it here in class so that we can work on it together. that answer your question about homework? Okay. But yeah, you'll have to like show your work. Like it doesn't help too much to just be like, ha, like, here's a sine wave. Like, well, where did that come from? How do you know it's a sine wave? Where did that come from? If you're plotting this kind of stuff. Grading seems okay so far. Okay. I'll post today, today or tomorrow, I'll have our first like campus-wired discussion where I'll, a I'll ask you to introduce yourself uh, to the class and to me, and then also ask you to take a look at the syllabus. If there's anything that I don't, like either makes you feel excluded or not, or like you're not included in the class in any kind of language in the syllabus, or if there's ways that, if there are other classes that made you feel more included, then please share like what changes we can make together so that we have a collaborative learning community rather than it's kind of like a you versus the teacher or you versus you versus teacher i don't know like a combative a, a uh, rising tide lifts all boats 
So if we're all working together, then all of us will learn. And the more we help each other, the more you cement and, and, and learn this material. And it's hard. None of this is easy. It's literally like the next stage of dynamics would be like rocket science. So, so when someone's like, ah, it's not rocket science, it's like, but it is, but this is rocket. <laughs> like this is the start of rocket science. So this is not easy, but you're not alone. I'm here. Everyone in this class is in the same, some, some people are behind you, some people are ahead of you, but we can work together and we can work, we can solve these problems together. So you're not alone. And if it feels hard, it's because it is hard. And that's okay. It's okay to just say, this is hard. Like, climb, like climbing a mountain, it's hard. But once you get to the top, you can enjoy the view and pass out from lack of oxygen. And then wake up and have a great snack and be with friends. All right, now... We all agreed force is MA and that that in order to have motion, you need to have some kind of force cause the motion. So far, so good. Does anyone disagree with Newton mechanics, Newtonian mechanics? Like nobody thinks like we're all, everything is actually quantum even at large scales and we just happen to think that it's all Newtonian mechanic, New Newtonian physics, no takers. Okay, all right. So every everything that happens happens because something caused it to happen. So there's always a action and reaction, and cause and effect. So if that's the case, do you have free will? Are you just are you just the effect of all these previous causes? This is a deep question. But take a second and ask, ask a neighbor. So this is called like think, pair, share. So think about it, pair up, share your ideas. So if every action is the cause, is, or every reaction is the cause of some action, so you need a force to cause something, but that force was caused by some other force, then where, where do we fit in? How do you make a choice? Everything was predetermined, right? What do you think? And take a minute, share it. I'll walk around and see what's going on.
So again, I only checked in with some of the room, but some of the things that I heard, there, there's kind of two groups of thoughts here. One is that, oh, you know, I've never thought about it. I don't have free will and that I can't make any decisions and everything is just, maybe I don't understand what's happening, but it's all predetermined. And that was that's kind of like old school Leibniz is that if you knew, if somehow you could get the exact positions of every atom in the universe and you knew where they were and how fast they're moving, then for the rest of eternity, you know exactly what's going to happen. 
that everything is just like a clock ticking, like lots of moving parts that maybe it's confusing, but it's all just ticking along and you're just part of this big, you're one cog in an infinite universe of other cogs. That's kind of one group is that you're, and some people are kind of like, oh no, like, like worldview is shattered. And other people, the other group that I kind of ran into is just kind of like, I don't buy it. No, I still have free will. I just, I just believe, I just know that there's free will. It's got to be there. That's kind of so far, but I might be missing some of the people that I talked to because I'm, I'm painting with a broad brush. What else? What other thoughts, ideas do you have? Yeah. Does it matter? Does it matter? Okay. I, like, I don't know. So many people. <laughs> this act is a great like engineering a <laughs> response. But, people act yeah. like a lack of free will is this inherently depressing thing. But okay. Like, you watch your favorite movie and you know what's going to happen. It's like still a great story, even though it's already laid out. Yeah. Like, you can like the choices that have been determined for you. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, I don't know. It's like you can but that's why spoilers so are so frustrating, though. When you're about to watch, if someone's about to watch Empire Strikes Back and someone gives them a spoiler, like they've never seen it, and there's a big spoiler, then it's so frustrating because you've just like taken away that that surprise, the that initial surprise. And every time you watch it after that, you'll remember that initial surprise. But, but I mean, getting the spoiler doesn't mean that like it's still like you. It's still what's going to happen anyway. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't change the drama of yeah. the situation. Like, there is still the build-up and, and the dramatic reveal and all of that. Yeah. That is a good engineering response of, like, it don't, it don't matter. <laughs> like, all of this, I still need F equals MA, and I'm still going to use it, and I'm still going to rock it. I agree with the idea of, like, we're never going to know if we have free will or are Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just like whether or not we have it, then we can use it, not use it, and we can go just enjoy, enjoy the ride. I didn't expect like the. It's not solipsism. It's um. What is it? It's not. So it's not a nihilistic because it is. It's a very positive nihilism. Is kind of like nothing matters. Oh. Well, but, I mean, nothing matters, but it doesn't have to be <laughs> negative. Yeah. It's what you want. Yeah. Absurd. Yeah, absurd. Absurd is like purely based in free will. It's like absurd. Absurdism. I mean, this is all existentialist discussion, but there's a like apathetic, like the apathy around free will. Like, eh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's good. I like that one. Were there other. Did I miss anyone else? Or or you've been captured, you've been put into a bucket. And I've I've removed your free will because I put you into a bucket and now you have to. And now that's your entire identity. Cool. It's a really nice bucket. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> bucket. <laughs> Problem is there's always leaks and there's ways to get out. You can always change. You are an individual, whether or not you think you're predetermined to be here or make that decision or do that, this and that. Others? This is one of, I, I think, one of the important things about like engineer versus just um, like being able to do stuff like being able to build, but not be able to think about it. It's kind of redefine, being able to define what it means. So in free will, like what is the def, what is your even definition of free will? Is it making choices? And if those choices are kind of predetermined, like, well, I guess then you still have it. It's just that your free will was predetermined, like everything is built in. Uh, but being able to make those kind of definitions and, and change, define the problem and define, and it's more of like a philo philosophical experiment of like, how do I define this problem? Like, what is the actual problem that I am defining here? And once you define that problem, then, then you can solve it. But the definition, definitions and kind of deciding 
what's important there, here and there. I think it's the more important part of separating yourself as an engineer. Like if you're designing a car for, for 70 years or for a hundred years, a car meant a gas powered thing that delivers people and, and goods. And now people are kind of revisiting that like, well, it doesn't have to be gas powered. Could be battery powered, could be, um, no one, no one's taking up solar power. That one's kind of tough, but, but yeah, it could be electric powered. And again, no one took up, no one has done steam powered again. Um, there were steam powered cars for a little bit, external combustion engines where you, you supply the heat and then you had a little steam generator that would generate the power to drive your car. The big problem was that even the smallest engine, even the shortest startup time. So imagine you go and you're like ready to go home and you turn the key to your car. The shortest startup time was two minutes. Can you imagine sitting in a parking lot for two minutes, just waiting for your, for your engine to start, like just watching it slowly boil and you're wa you're watching something boil. So anyway, I don't think steam engines are coming back, but the, these kind of definitions and like the philosophical understanding, I think is more important. Like one of the more important things that you get from college engineering experience more so than the math and the building, like all that is great, but you should be asking like, why, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Like, why is this important? That's what I think, but you should be questioning me. Like why that doesn't sound important. I need to be able to build things. Oh, and we still have time. Just look, well, we go till 1045, right? These classes are longer. Usually it's like we do the 50 minute lectures on, for this class. Nice. So we still have time. What do we want to do next? Let me give you, since one of the first things that we're going to do is homework with uh, some Python, and we're going to use Python in the course. I'll give you, we'll do a demo of like how to, how to open what's called a Jupyter notebook and then how to interact and kind of use that. Have you used Jupyter notebooks before? No. Maybe. Yes? Maybe? Maybe in physics. Something Maybe physics? Like yeah, Colab? Yeah. Did you use yeah. Colab? Yeah. Yes, Colab? Okay, this is the same, same thing as Colab. Interface is like just different enough to drive you crazy. Um, but it's, it's the same thing. Like you can type things in, hold shift, hit enter, or click the run button. Um, but it's just Jupyter. Colab is, and this this kind of I would use Colab, but they kind of they irk me because they took an open a free open source software Jupyter. They they took it into their own house, changed it just slightly, and now they don't charge people for it. But you can't you can't enter code. They don't charge people for it yet, but they will charge you. Like if you, you if you need like more notebooks or something, but there are ways that they can charge money for using what was a free open source software. It was supposed to be a community driven free software, and now it's a Google owned for profit software. So that that kind of bugs me. So I don't use Colab. Um, all right. So if we want to open up this first interacting with Python, um, and actually let me show you. We'll go back into the syllabus and we'll get there from our classroom. So as classroom classrooms loading up, fall 2023. This is this is what once you click that link for Google Classroom, you'll you'll be you'll see this page, and then you can go up to the classwork 
Um, one of the other reasons that I like Classroom is that it automatically creates a Google Calendar that, that you can add to your own personal calendar, like whatever calendar management system you use, and it'll keep you up to date with the class. So you're, you don't have to log into Husky CT. You can have just like calendar push notifications and say like, hey, homework tomorrow, like, or quiz tomorrow, something like that. So then homework zero, this intro to Python. And then I click this interacting with Python, which I'm going to open in a new tab. And then it brings me back into the website to the same spot that I was just at. So every, every homework will have a link directly to that homework assignment back on our main open educational resource, the, the website. So now I can click on this rocket and the Jupyter Hub. And it's going to create a copy of that website that I can now like, change. I can modify it however I want, and and use Python on that on this work. Uh, it will give you this warning that the connection is not private. It is a private connection. It's just that the certificate is out of date. And if I was more malicious, then I could use that. I don't know, sell your data or something. Um, but all your data are belong to UConn anyway. So I don't know that you can you can accept this. I do promise that I am not profiting off of anything that you put onto this website. It's a YouTube promise. I mean, I do get a salary from UConn, but they're not paying me to do this. So this is purely like an extra thing that I think is helpful in our dynamics journey. Do you hold office hours? Office hours are all by appointment. Uh, so if you click that the Calendly link, anywhere you see my name in blue, so I'll go back to like the main page. My name is in blue at the bottom of every page. It'll catch up in a second. If you click that blue link, then the then the next like big bold link. So as it comes up, it's coming down. The next like big bold link is one that says Calendly, and if you click that, then you can schedule office hour. Um, Calendly, and then coming up in a second is our Jupyter Notebook. There are, it's a combination, I like Jupyter because it's a combination of uh, text and code. So you can use the text to kind of explain what you're trying to do or what that means, and then use the code to actually try something different, like a little experimental spot. So shift and enter will will run through both text and code examples. This, uh, these import things, it's like, this is the magic of Python, is that nothing, nothing gets, like you don't build anything from scratch, you just like import solutions for everything. Um, so I'm importing a plotting software, I'm importing NumPy, which is like, a, it's almost like MATLAB, like an array. So it lets you build arrays. They're called array or matrices and these kind of things. So you can do like vectors and matrices and that kind of stuff. And then this uh, this plotting style, this is just one that I prefer because the text is bigger and the lines are bolder. It's just easier, easier to look at those kind of graphs. If you don't like it, you can find your own style. Um, I, I don't care for the default style, but if you like it, then I can I can deal with it. Um, so running through, I'm just kind of running through these and I'll let you, I'll let you do that yourself. But first, first program assignment is always like a hello world. Like how do you print something? Um, so I can make any kind of message that I want right now. I've got. 2001 Space Odyssey. 
but we could also do the tick spoon. Um, it might be a dated reference though. We'll do SpongeBob. But printing printing stuff is a great way, especially if you're not sure like what's going on. You can print out variables, print out messages. Um, but again, with uh, with Jupyter notebooks, I don't have to print out. Like if I'm trying to say like this graph is something, I don't have to use a print statement to create a graph and print a statement. I can change this cell from a code cell to oops, a code cell to a markdown cell. So I clicked on cell up at the top and and very slow today. So at the top, come down and choose Markdown. And now, whenever I type something, I'm ready. When I type something, now I can hold Shift and hit Enter, and it'll execute that cell and give me like nicely formatted text. Yeah. This will be like the first homework assignment is going through this notebook. Um, and then the other, most of the homework assignments are like handwritten things, but uh, once in a while I'll ask you to graph something. I like Python for graphing. Uh, if you like, if you prefer like Excel, Excel works fine. Um, or, or um, I, I've seen people try to graph by hand, and if you're gonna do that, then you really need like graphing paper, and you need to like actually calculate like, all right, at at x equals one, what is the value? Like, how big is this value? And at x equals two, how big is that value? Otherwise, the graph looks kind of sloppy. Like, it, I mean, you kind of get the gist of it, but you can't tell scales from one one graph to the next. So I again, like Excel, Python, MATLAB. Um, if you're feeling real crazy, like Julia or C plus plus or any, any of those, but um, you can even do it like in. I've made graphs in um, Blender. Those, those look kind of cool too. Like you can make like a regular 2D graph, but then like create a lighting animation and send it through 3D space or something. But I would go simple. Like Excel is great. It's one of the it's one of the most used engineering tools is Excel engineering softwares. So if you want more practice with that, you can you can use that here. All right. So we did our first functions. I'm going to scroll down all the way, just skip over all the readings, and I'll let you do that. Down to the problems. Um, so this will be, it'll catch up in a second. The problems is really what uh, we're looking for in the homework. So you can do any kind, of, any kind of work that you want up top. You can rewrite notes or anything for yourself, like for any of the text and change the code however you want. And then the problems is asking you to apply what you just read um, in this situation. So here, if I want to calculate volume of the box, let me delete that. How would I calculate volume of a box? It's 12.5 by 11 by 14. Yeah. OK, so if I want to multiply all three in Python, what would I say? How do I do that? OK, yeah, 12.5, asterisk. Oh, sorry, if I can type. And then I'm going to run x equals 12.5 times 11 times 14. And what's the volume? As it ca It'll catch up in a second. It's 
So what's the volume? Print X. Print X. Okay. Yeah. So now we'll go back to our print command, which is our first thing that we talked about. Now what's the volume? Again, it'll catch up in a second. Nineteen twenty-five meters cubed. Inch, yeah. The the double quote is inch. Um, just a handy little tidbit. So if it's inches, I like to actually say, like, like I like to specify the units when I'm giving. An answer, so I can I could do that here by adding like a comma, inches cubed, and then it would tell me like 1925 inches cubed. And I'll just change how it printed out what the answer was. But one of the thing that I was trying to show here is that just because you define something doesn't mean that that's going to be the output, and and really the only the only thing that gets outputted is the last calculation you made so if the last thing you do on the line is define something then it, it won't show you any output or if we want to get we can get like fancier Have you seen like regular expression kind of stuff where you get to format how the number gets inputted into the box? That one's kind of, it's nice if you're trying to like, especially if you're creating like um, a script that's like, I want to go through these 10 Excel files and I want that, I want you to print out the average number of the first column in all those Excel files. Because Python has like an Excel converter you can say like, okay, Python, open this Excel file, give me the first column, take the average, and then print the result. So it's a great glue language that you can use across Excel and any kind of finite element or, or CFD software. Usually there's a Python interface to run the software. So you could run a CFD code, get the average result, and then print it out. But with these kind of like 1.0F, I'm telling it, I want a floating point number, so it'll have some kind of decimal, but I don't want any decimal places after the after the number. Then the next thing is asking for like density. So if I want to get pounds per inch cubed, what would I do? How would I change my result? X divide by 31? 31 over X, okay. Like that. And now instead of one decimal, instead of zero decimal, I'll put like five decimal places. So I can see that it's um, 0 0.01610 pounds per inch cubed. Otherwise, if I don't specify like what the format is, then it just gives me like a whole bunch of extra decimal spots, which I don't, in general, I don't care about anything after this. It depends on what I'm doing, but in this case, if someone's like, what's the density of this box? I just need like two sig figs, like one six. One six is enough. I don't need all that extra, like this three, if that's a five, does it change anything? No. Who cares? How are we doing so far? This is a lot of information. 
we did get a little discussion in, which is nice. Issues, questions, concerns. Yeah. This one, let's see. It doesn't look like there is. That is a good question, because that would be something nice to add, because it's a nice, um, nice like thing that you can use to make your print statements look nicer. That's a good, yeah, I should add that to that printing and printing variables and stuff. Are we ready for Thursday? Try to do some, some work. So my suggestion would be, so let's come. So my suggestion is that um, homework zero, and I'm going to skip in a second, but anytime you find, you click on that course calendar, it'll show you like the upcoming stuff that's due. Um, there's an orientation practice quiz where I'm asking you to draw a free body diagram and it happens to be Spider-Man. I'm a big Spider-Man fan, if you couldn't tell by my web persona. So that would be a practice quiz due Friday, and then next week, so a week from today, is that intro to Python. So my suggestion is Thursday. By Thursday, you kind of read through it, and then that way on Thursday, we can take a look at it and answer any questions that people are having. We can work through any problems or issues there. And if there's no issues, then we can start on homework one. Or if we fix everything, then we'll do homework one. How's that? Good plan? All right, thanks for coming.